it's Marta here. Welcome to this grammar revision compilation for Spanish GCSE. Here you will find revision of some of the most important grammar elements that you must know at GCSE, um, at the GCSE level. Of course, knowing grammar is generally important, but it, you know it's especially crucial for the written and for the translation components of your qualification. In the video description below, just here, you will find details of what is covered and when, and also down here, in the description, you will find links to note sheets that you can use while watching the videos and the activities that you can do after watching the different components. So this is all from me for now. Enjoy your revision and buena suerte. So here we've got the canvas and let's start looking at what we use the present tense for. So the present tense, um, we use it to talk about things that are happening now or to talk about things that happen regularly. Regularly. I struggle to spell this word. So things that happen now or regularly. And these are the three um, types of endings, the three lots of endings that you should be uh, familiar with by now, um, depending on whether a verb ends in AR, in ER, or IR. And why do, what do I mean by this? So it means that when I look at the verb in the dictionary, the form that I find in the dictionary, the infinitive, ends in AR, ER, or IR. Okay? So if it's a verb like hablar, AR ending, these are the endings that I'm going to use in the present tense. So I speak will be hablo, you speak hablas, he or she speaks habla, we speak hablamos, you guys speak hablais, uh, they speak hablan. Okay, same thing with comer for ER verbs. So I eat, como, and so on. Como, comes, come, comemos, comes, comen. And then vivir, does vivo, vives, vive, vivimos, vivis, viven. Now, these are only examples, okay? These are only patterns that we are going to apply uh, with all of the regular verbs, okay, in the same form with all of the regular verbs that follow this same pattern. So what do I mean by this? That if instead of the verb hablar, I have the verb saltar, Okay, and I want to say we jump. So what am I going to do? I'm going to do exactly the same as I've done with the ver verb hablar. And what have I done? I've taken the verb, I've got rid of the last two letters, the AR, and in its place, I've put the ending that I need. So what do I need to say? I need to say we jump. So in Spanish, remember, I'm not going to really very often use that word we, and instead I'm going to express that idea with the endings. And what are the endings? In this case, the we endings of AR verbs is amos. So instead of saltar, I'm going to have saltamos. If instead of saltar, I had the verb cantar, and I wanted to say they sing, I would take away the AR, I would take the AN ending for the they ending, for the they form, and I would say can, tan. And the process is exactly the same, whatever ending you've got. Of course, if instead of, of an AR verb, I have an ER verb, like comer here, but instead of if instead of comer, I have beber, and I want to say he drinks, okay, I'm going to take away the ER ending because it's a he, I'm going to take this one and it's going to be bebe, he drinks. If instead of vivir in the case of I am, I have the verb salir, to go out, and I want to say they go out. So I'm going to take away the I are ending and in its place, I'm going to put the e -R, the en ending because it's the ending for the they. So they go out will be salen. Okay, so really straightforward. Just need to you just need to remember the endings for the present tense. Okay, so regular verbs, easy, easy peasy. Now things get a little bit more complicated when we start looking at some irregular verbs. And the most common irregular verbs of the, of the two more the two verbs that I will find most often is ser and estar, which mean to be. <clears throat> okay, in English there is one verb to be. And forms of the verb to be are I am, we are, they were, we will be. In Spanish, we've got two. So we're going to now look at the forms, what they look like, and what do we use them. So let's start with the verb ser. Ser is here. And these are the forms on, in, of the present of the verb ser. So if I want to say I am, I'm going to say soy. You are to one person. Talking to one person, I'm going to say eres. He or she is, is. 
we are, somos, you are, sois, again, in this case, talking to several people, and they are, son. Notice that it is a very irregular verb, and the only thing you can do in this case is just learn it and get used to using it. <clears throat> now, let's look at when I use ser, okay? When I use ser instead of estar, um, to say things like I am, we are, etc. So if we start looking at these examples, we've got in A, we have two sentences, soy Juan, I am Juan, and somos hermanos, we are brothers or we are siblings. What are we doing here? Here we are introducing or identifying or presenting. Okay, in this case, I'm going to use the verb ser, soy, somos. So we, we're using these two, in this case, two different forms of the verb sois, uh, sorry, soy here, somos here, okay? So if I'm saying this is what it is, this is that, I'm going to use ser. When else am, when else am I using ser? I'm using ser here. Son las tres, it's three o'clock. Es tarde, it's late. I'm using ser to talk about time, to tell the time, to say what time it is. I'm using ser. The next example down, son 20 euros. It's 20 euros. ¿Cuánto es la comida? How much is the food? To ask or give prices, the price of something, I'm going to use ser. The other case where I'm going to use ser is here. La fiesta es en casa de Alfonso. The party is at Alfonso's house. El concierto fue en el estadio. The concert was at the stadium. What am I doing here? I'm saying where something takes place. Okay, where something takes place. And if we, if you notice here, I've used, this is the past tense. What I've used here, I've given you the examples. Okay, I'm showing ser and estar in the present, in the present tense. This is the present of ser, this is the present of estar. But of course, these verbs have got all the different forms. They've got, inf um, they've got um, future, they've got preterite, they've got imperfect, etc., etc. So I just wanted to show you an example of a, another tense, okay? In this case, the preterite. El concierto fue en el estadio. The concert was at the stadium, okay? So we can use that as well. So in this case, we're saying where something takes place, we're using ser. The next one down, el vaso es de cristal. El vaso es de cristal. The glass is made of um, of, of uh, crystal or of glass. Or the the yeah the yeah the glass is made of glass really. Uh, and los zapatos son de piel. The the shoes are made of um, leather or are of leather. So to say what something is made of, okay. To talk about the material. What something. is made of. We are also going to use the verb ser. If we continue down, soy de Guadalajara, I am from Guadalajara, Ana y yo somos portuguesas, Ana and I are Portuguese. What are we doing here? We are saying where, sorry, where somebody is from, or we are talking about someone's nationality or origin. Okay. In that case, we also use ser. Okay, we also use ser. <clears throat> and we've got a couple more cases. Andrés es cocinero. Andrés is a cook. Yo antes era recepcionista. In this case, notice this is the imperfect form. I Before, I used to be a receptionist. What are we talking about here? We're talking about jobs or professions. Okay, in that case, we also use the verb ser. And finally, Miguel es bastante tímido y yo no soy muy alta. What we're doing here, in, in, sorry, in the first sentence, Miguel is quite t uh, timid or quite shy. And no soy muy alta is I'm not very tall. <clears throat> what we are using is describing. Okay, we're describing um, and we are giving, we're going to say permanent features. 
okay? Describing permanent features about someone's personality or, or about someone's um, appearance, okay? If someone's not very tall and you're an adult, it's unlikely that's going to change. If someone is quite shy, it's also quite unlikely that's going to change. So in, in things that are permanent or relatively permanent, we use the verb ser, okay? So do remember all of these. It's quite tricky sometimes. I know it can be quite tricky sometimes to remember exactly every single case where we use ser. But if you remember some of these sentences, okay, when you have to say, for example, all the time, is it, um, es, okay, if you, if you remember the, the, the time, that if you remember that you say, son las tres, you will know, okay, yes, in time it's ser. Or if you remember, I don't know, es muy alta, es muy alta, that's, that's ser, okay? And, and if you remember examples rather than a list of cases, that's going to help you remember better and be able to apply it, okay? So let's have a look now at estar. So the other verb to be, when do we use estar? So we're going to use estar for, if we look here, el hotel está en la costa, the hotel is on the coast. Estamos en casa de Luis, we are at Luis's house. So what we are talking about is location, okay? Location, where something or somebody is, okay? Different from where something takes place. Okay, bear that in mind. Where something is, is the verb estar. Los perros están ladrando o está lloviendo mucho hoy. The dogs are barking and it's raining a lot today. What are we doing here? Here we're using the present continuous. Okay, present continuous. So the dogs are barking. It's that form of the R plus the ing. It is raining. It is raining with the gerund, with the ing ending, okay? If we're using that tense, that tense is, or that form is made with the verb estar. And finally, if we look at the last example, we've got estoy muy cansada. I'm very tired. Estamos enfadados con María. We are annoyed with María. We are angry with María. Uh, and el suelo está muy sucio. The floor is very dirty. What we are doing here is describing, okay, we are describing, but we are describing non-permanent, non-permanent features or moods, okay? So, I am annoyed, estoy enfadada. That's not permanent, that's not part of my personality. That is, uh, this is how I'm feeling at the moment, so I'm going to use estar, okay? Here, el suelo está muy sucio, the floor is dirty. Being dirty is a, um, a temporary condition that can be changed, okay? So, we use the verb estar. Let's remember that there are lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of adjectives that you can use to describe people, both in personality-wise and also um, physically-wise. And it's going to be, to be really important that you, you know as many as possible of these for your picture description, for example, or for when you're writing to be able to describe someone really well. So remember that if we are using the verb estar, if we're going to use someone's per to, to describe someone's personality, sorry, someone's uh, mood, how they're feeling at that point, okay, it's important that we can remember words like for example animado cheerful animado um, things like we could also have deprimido depressed if someone is um, feeling not that well of course this is the masculine form but of course it will have the a if it's a feminine form we could also have words like triste sad or contento contento or contenta feliz we could also say estar de buen de buen humor, to be in a good mood, or de mal humor, to be in a bad mood, okay? So remember, we've got lots of personality adjectives and, and expressions that we can use. And equally, if we're describing, sorry, not personality, mood or, 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 or frame of mind or the way you're feeling at that point. And there's also lots of adjectives that we can use to describe someone's personality. We can say that someone is, uh, for example, egoísta, selfish. We can say that someone is atrevido or atrevida, very daring, that someone is uh, optimista, an optimist or pessimista. Remember the adjectives that end in ista don't change, okay? They're the same in masculine and feminine. We could also say that someone is hablador, very chatty, or that someone is... Um, for example, I don't know, perezoso, 
perezoso o perezosa, lazy, or that someone is, um, I don't know, let's say desagradable. Es desagradable, son desagradables, okay? All of those, because they've got to do with, with what a person is like personality-wise, um, we're going to use the verb ser, okay? Of course, also with adjectives such as guapo, good-looking, feo, ugly, um, alto, bajo, tall, short, uh, viejo, old, um, nu uh, nuevo, new, okay? Anything that's describing someone or something physically, we're also going to use ser. Right, so here I am with this uh, second canvas, and this is on the reflexive verb. So this is our grammar part of the session. So let's have a look at what, what, what I mean by reflexive verbs. So I'm going to give you um, a couple of examples. So when you say, for example, in Spanish, um, mi padre, mi padre y yo nos llevamos, nos llevamos bien. Okay, this nos llevamos is reflexive. If you say in Spanish um, something on the lines of um, Juan y María, Juan y María se casan um, en la iglesia. Juan and María are getting married at the church. Uh, so this se casan is also a reflexive verb. So let's have a look what we understand by reflexive verbs and how on earth they work. While I'm talking about these reflexive verbs, just to, something to bear in mind. Most of what I'm going to be explaining is going to be based on the present tense, okay, which we've got here. I've put here uh, the the three conjugations of the in, in of the present tense, the regular verbs, what we saw on uh, in the session in, on Tuesday. <clears throat> but reflexive verbs are like any other verb, okay? They're a normal verb. So you can use them in any tense, okay? But so for clarity, we're going to start by um, looking at how they would work in the present tense. Once we understand it in the present tense, we can then use them in any other tense, okay? So um, how do these verbs work? Right, the first thing we need to bear in mind, I'm sure you, most of you will have bumped into the situation where you look something up in the dictionary. Yes, that happens, that still happens. People do look things up in the dictionary. Let's say you want to look, at, you want to know how to say in Spanish to fall in love okay to fall in love so you look it up in the dictionary and lo and behold you find that to fall in love in spanish is enamorarse now you at that point you remember that your teacher has told you yes you do remember something that your teacher has said to you that is really good so your teacher has told you that in spanish all verbs when you look them up in the dictionary so in their infinitive form will end in AR, ER, or IR. But this is not what we've got here. What we've got here is that this verb ends in C. What's happened here? Okay, look a little bit more closely. We've got AR here. So after all, this verb is an AR verb, is enamorar. However, this verb tends most commonly, more often than not, is used in this way. And in the sense of to fall in love, if someone falls in love with someone else, it, it's certainly used in this way. It, it's used as a reflexive verb. So, uh, you know, in front of this situation, what on earth do I do with this? Right, we need two steps here. I'm going to, um, yeah, there are two steps that we need to take, okay? First of all, I'm going to start with the easier step which is what I do with the verb. So the verb will conjugate like any other normal verb, with like any other regular verb. So in this case, enamorar. So we would change it, depending on what we want to say, using these endings, because it's an AR verb, right? So if I want to say that I fall in love, I may or may not use the yo, and I will say enamor, 
losing the AR, and I'll add the O ending. If I want to say that you fall in love, I'll say enamor, and then I'll use the I'll use the AS. If I want to say that he, she fall in love, enamor, ah. If I want to say that we fall in love, enamor amos. So notice it, it works like any other verb, okay? Or, or any other regular verb. So vosotros enamoráis and they fall in love. I'll bring this down up a little bit. Enamoran. Okay, so up to here, they don't work. They are, you know, some of them will be regular, some of them will be irregular, but they, they, there's nothing particular about them, okay, o other than that they work slightly different in terms of what we're going to see next, okay? But this first bit is completely regular or, or irregular, depending on the verb, but it's completely, it's fine. There's nothing to worry about. Now, the second step, the second thing that you need to bear in mind is this, that it's got this C. And what happens to this C? Well, it depends on what I want to say, because it will take a slightly different form depending on who is doing the action, okay? So in this case, on who is falling in love. So if it's me, if I want to say I fall in love, then it would be yo me enamoro. If it was you, it would be tu te enamoras. If it was he or she, it would be él el o ella uh, se enamora. We fall in love would be nos enamoramos. You guys fall in love, sorry, you guys fall in love would be os enamorais and they fall in love would be se enamoran, okay? So notice how these are optional, okay? As you will have learned by now, as you will know, these you can, you, you may use them, you may not, depending on the context, depending on what you want. But these, in the case of reflexive verbs, you, these are compulsory. You have to use these um, pronouns, okay? And you have to use the right one for, you know, depending on, on the situation. So whenever I do something, it will be me, you, will be te, he, she, or you in the form of respect, se, we will be nos, os, and se. And notice how for each of these, um, uh, each of these pronouns, therefore, corresponds an ending, okay? They, when, when they are reflexive verbs, they need to, they, they go sort of in pairs, okay? To this pronoun corresponds this ending and so on and so forth, okay? So if um, in that case, as I had um, up, um, up there, I had the verb casarse, okay? To get married, casarse. If I wanted to say they get married, I would say, um, so I would take this. So in the case of se, of, of they or he, that the se stays se. So this se, would go here, and because it's they, I need the A-N -A -N ending. So it would be cas, removing the A-R, and se casan, they get married, okay? If instead of casarse, it was to get annoyed, okay? To get annoyed is enfadarse, to get annoyed or get upset, and I wanted to say we get upset, so I would take the se, would go to the front, in the form of nos, and then I would take enfad, get rid of the AR, and instead of that, I take the amos, nos enfadamos, we get upset. Okay, so notice, remember, the endings, nothing to worry about, generally regular, there will be some irregulars, but that's that. But what you need to pay attention is to the pronoun that will replace that se from the back of the infinitive, okay? Now, there are two groups of verbs which you should be especially aware of because there, there are a lot, of, um, a lot of reflexive verbs within these groups. So one, this one group of verbs is the verbs to do with relationships. Okay, so have we, as we've seen, casarse, to get married, separarse, to separate, divorciarse, llevarse bien o mal, enamorarse, enfadarse, pelearse, and notice in this case, it's just to mention, it's completely, it's a complete coincidence that they all end in AR, okay? 
um, there, there's no rule by which re, um, reflexive verb end in end in ar. In fact, we'll see here in a second that in, in this case there's one, for example, that ends in ir. There are they, there are reflexive verbs that end in other verbs, uh, sorry, in other endings, but in this case, it, you know, the, the most common in relationships, they seem to uh, end in AR. Okay, um, so in Spanish, just to so that, that that might help remind yourself of, of what these reflexive verbs are. So in Spanish, for example, in the in the tense of casarse, when we use this verb, I'm not saying I get married. If I say me caso, okay, me caso would be I get married or I'm getting married. Me caso. If I translated it literally, it will be it would be something like I marry myself. Okay. If I, if I want to say we get married, which would be nos casamos, um, or we are getting married, I'm I'm literally saying we marry ourselves, and we know that's not what we mean because you can't marry yourself; you need someone to do it. But in Spanish, that's how the verb is used. Okay. Uh, in the same in the same case, separarse. So we separate ourselves. Divorciarse, we divorce ourselves. Okay, and and yes, that doesn't mean that it's as easy as to say, right? That's it. We've you know we 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 have divorced. No, someone has to do it. But that's how we use the verb. Okay, um, and we've got here, for example, also the very common um, in the in the case of, of talking about relationships that you will find a lot. The expression llevarse bien, llevarse mal. Well, that's what it is. It's also a reflexive construction. Okay, so we get on well. So we get on well, of course, it will be nos, and then ye, of course, the amos, because it's we, and then if we get on well, nos llevamos bien. If I want to say we get on badly, nos llevamos mal, okay? In the same way that this happens with relationships, it also happens with verbs of daily routine, okay? Verbs of daily routine, like despertarse, Levantarse, ducharse, lavarse los dientes, peinarse, vestirse, acostarse. So in Spanish, I wake myself up, I, I, I um, get myself up, I shower myself. So for example, if I wanted to say I have a shower, in Spanish I'm saying I shower myself. So I need to, to take the se and turn it into a me and then duchar would conjugate normally. Ducho because it's I. Okay, if I wanted to say I, uh, sorry, let's say we get dressed. Okay, um, so in this case, the se, because it's we get dressed, it will be nos, and then it's vestir, so it's an I R verb, so it's we, so we need the imos ending, so we need nos vestimos. Okay. So notice how I need to be juggling both things, the pronoun at the front and also the verb ending. Okay. One thing to bear in mind is the last thing I'm going to mention, infinitives. Okay. Sometimes, sometimes there are some constructions where I need to use infinitive. So for example, if I want to say, um, I can't, uh, I can't have a shower. This morning, let's say the boiler's gone. Okay, I want to say in Spanish, I can't have a shower this morning. So, I can't is in Spanish, no puedo. Now, the verb poder is always followed by infinitive. Okay, so I need the verb in infinitive after this, just because the construction so, um, so demands it. So, have a shower, to have a shower, we've seen is ducharse. Okay, so I would be tempted to say no puedo ducharse esta mañana, but there's a problem because it's me who can't have a shower. So in this case, the se needs to be re replaced by the me, okay, but it's still kept as a word, so as a single word. So it will be no puedo ducharme esta mañana. Okay, same thing if I said, for example, um, if I said we want to brush brush our hair, okay, we want to is queremos, queremos, um, to, to brush or to comb our hair, okay, so peinarse is to brush or to comb, so queremos pei, 
peinar, and because it's we want to do it, would be peinarnos, okay, el pelo. Queremos peinarnos el pelo, or just peinarnos, okay? So do remember that when the verb is in infinitive, we still need to change the um, pronoun, okay? So I hope this isn't too mind-boggling uh, to, you know, to avoid it, you know, becoming really mind-boggling. Two things you can do. One, practice, practice, practice until it becomes not second nature necessarily, but until you, you get a really good grip of it. And secondly, look at some of the expressions that you really, really need to know. Okay, it's things like this. Nos llevamos bien. Uh, me caso. Uh, nos casamos. Okay, some of these verbs that are going to be the most common ones that you may have to use in your writing or in your speaking or that you may be um, reading or listening when you do your your um, yeah your, your exams. So do do look at those and try to maybe memorize a couple just so that you don't get surprised when you when you see them. So let's have a look at the imperfect. Okay, and we're going to start by looking at two things. One is when, when is the imperfect used? And the other one is the how, okay? How, how do we build the imperfect? Let's look first at when the imperfect is used so that we can start to understand when am I gonna use it, okay? What, what is the imperfect good for? And when am I going to use it? So the first case where I'm going to use the imperfect is, uh, probably a bit of a classic, okay, which is like to, is to describe. So let's remember that the imperfect is a tem, a time, sorry, it's a tense of the past, okay, it's a form of past tense. So if we are describing, we're going to be describing something in the past. So we're going to describe what something, what something, or someone, it can be used for people, it can be used for uh, things, uh, what something or someone, oh sorry, was or looked like before, okay? It can also be what someone or someone looked like at a certain, pi uh, at a certain time in the past, okay? At a certain time in the past. So what do I mean by this? If I'm talking about my holidays and I want to describe what the hotel was like, so I'm going to, I'm talking about my holidays, I'm talking what I did, I'm talking about where I went, so I'm saying, I'm explaining everything in the past. So when I'm explaining, when I'm describing what the hotel was like, I'm also describing it in the past, like, like I do in English. I just said what the hotel was like. It doesn't mean that that hotel's not there anymore. It doesn't mean that that hotel is now any different. I may have been on holiday last week. The hotel is still the same. But because I'm expressing, I'm explaining everything in the past, I'm also, if I want to also describe the hotel in the past tense, this is the tense I'm going to use. It's the imperfect, okay? So a sentence in the imperfect to describe the hotel, I could say, for example, El, oh, sorry, el hotel, el hotel era enorme, el hotel era enorme, and as we will see in a minute, this era is a form of the imperfect, okay, if I translate it, the hotel was enormous. I could also say, el hotel, el hotel tenía dos piscinas, the hotel had to swimming pools. It doesn't mean it doesn't have them anymore. It just means that I'm, I'm, I'm describing something from the past, so the hotel where I stayed, so I'm, I'm describing it in past tense. And if I'm describing in the past tense, I'm using the imperfect. I could also say, um, I could also say if I wanted, for example, to describe um, my grandma, okay, what she was like, I could say, mi, mi abuela, mi abuela, Tenía el pelo gris. My grandma, sorry, my grandma had grey hair. Mi abuela tenía el pelo gris. And I would also be using the imperfect because I'm describing what someone used to be like. Okay? So 
important um, important to understand one of the uses of the imperfect another use of the imperfect I'm going to use a different color in this case another use of the imperfect the second the second one I'm going to to tell you about is uh, that we use it to say or to explain what what someone used to do in the past okay we can also say for what we can also use it for what used to happen okay so habits things that happened on a regular basis so for example if i used to play football okay if i used to play football in the past when i was a child i could say cuando era pequeña yo jugaba a fútbol yo jugaba a fútbol and this jugaba is the imperfect okay and in this case i'm not explaining i'm not describing something that i did once or twice or something that happened in a particular occasion i'm explaining what used to be the case so i used to play football i could say uh, manuel used to dance ballet so i would say manuel Manuel bailaba, oh sorry, bailaba ballet, okay? Manuel ba bailaba ballet, okay? And again, it's something that he may not do anymore. It's something in the past. He, he danced ballet, he used to dance ballet, so I'll, I'll use it in the imperfect. And this one is really, really important, okay? And it's important to notice that it is not something that happened once, twice. It's not an event. It's uh, something that happened on a regular basis. I'm sorry if you hear a little bit of background noise right now. There's a helicopter just hovering around. Um, so I hope this is not coming through the microphone too, um, too loudly. Let me carry on. And the third case where I'm going to use the imperfect is to say okay to say what someone was doing in the past so let's let's say for ongoing ongoing activities so for example what do i mean by this if i i don't know if the phone rings and it, and I'm having a shower, okay, if I'm explaining that this happened yesterday, if I want to say the phone rang while I was having a shower, when I was ha having a shower, this having a shower, this me having a shower is an ongoing activity. So this was happening when the phone rang, yeah? So this activity of having a shower, which is what was happening, when the phone rang, this would be in the um, imperfect, okay? So uh, in this case, this would be in Spanish, sonó el, oh, hold on, el teléfono, sonó el teléfono, the telephone rang, and notice this is not imperfect, this is uh, preterite, okay? So ignore this one for now. Sonó el teléfono uh, mientras, while, me duchaba. Okay, sonó el teléfono mientras me duchaba. And this duchaba is in the imperfect because it's an ongoing thing. This was happening when the phone rang. I was in the shower. Okay, so it's these three cases mainly where we will use the imperfect as the, te as the, as the past tense that we will need to use. Okay. Now, so having seen this, let's have a look at how we build the present, uh, sorry, the, the imperfect, and then we will, I'll, I'll give you some more examples so that you finish understanding how it all works. So if you look here on the, on the left-hand side or towards the center of the page, you've got, you've got here three examples, one for each type of verb. So this one for the AR verbs, this one for the ER verbs, this one for the IR verbs. And this is what happens. The main thing you need to remember is that there are two different sets of endings. This one for the AR ending, which are characterized by the presence of, of an ABA, okay, 
navegaba, yo navegaba, tú navegabas, él, ella navegaba, navegábamos, navegabais, navegaban, ok? And another set of endings, which is for both the ER and the IR verbs, ok? These two type of verbs, the ER and the IR verbs, they do this, they, they share the same endings, and that's got the IA. Leía, leías, leía, leíamos, leíais, leían. Recibía, recibías, recibía, recibíamos, recibíais, recibían. Okay? Same set of endings. So, two different sets of endings, relatively straightforward. Just remember, AR has one, end, one set, ER and IR has another one. So, if I, what, would I, what would I use this for? So, let's say, for example, that I used to receive lots of letters. So, before the internet, I used to receive lots of letters. So, I've got recibir is to receive, which I've got it here. Because it, I want to say I used to receive, it's going to be this one. Okay? So, I could say antes... Antes del internet, before the internet, antes del internet, yo recibía muchas cartas. Antes del internet, yo recibía muchas cartas. And I'm using the, I, um, the IA ending, IA because it's an IR verb, and also because it's the I form, okay, recibía. If instead of recibir, I wanted to use the verb vivir, so for example, if I wanted to say before I used to live in, I don't know, before I used to live in Zaragoza, okay, so this is what I want to say. Before I used to live in In Zaragoza. Okay, so I'm going to. I, it's really important that I look at two things. It's important that I lo you look at this and I take the whole of the used to live and I don't get bogged down with trying to think how do I say in Spanish I used to because I need to remember this used to. All, it, all, all I need to think about is it's a certain form of the verb. So it's the imperfect. So I need to think okay, this is going to be the imperfect in the I form and what is the verb going to be? The verb is vivir. So, if I have vivir, I'm going to get rid of the IR ending, as it usually happens. And because it's I used to live, this is going to be the ending, ia. So, instead of vivir, I'm going to have vivia. So, therefore, the whole, the final sentence will be antes. Vivía en Zaragoza. Antes vivía en Zaragoza. Okay, another sentence I could say, similar to here, I could say before the internet, we used to send many letters. So I want to say before the internet, we used to send many letters. Okay, in that case, I need to look at the verb, I need to take all of this as the verb, used to send. So what, do we, what I'm going to do is get the verb send, which is NBR, in the we form, in the imperfect, because it's something that used to happen. So, because it's we and it's imperfect, I'm going to get rid of the AR ending, and I'm going to look, it's an AR verb, and in the we form, nosotros, so I'm going to need habamos. So I'm going to do navegábamos. Okay, so antes del internet, navegamos, uh, sorry. I got that completely wrong. It's not navegábamos, of course. It's the verb enviar. So it's enviábamos. So antes del internet, enviábamos 
muchas cartas. Okay, so the <clears throat> the imperfect is, is a tense that you will need to be good at. You will need to be able to use well to express any time, you know, anything that if make you write about, yeah, about this, um, the free time or technology. What did you used to do before? What, okay, any time that someone asks you, how was that different? What happened before that doesn't happen now? Um, what did you used to, I don't know, what did you used to enjoy at school? What did you used to, uh, what sports did you used to do? You will need the imperfect for, okay? Now, the last thing I'm going to mention regarding the imperfect is these irregular verbs. The good thing about the imperfect is that, is that there are very few irregular verbs, specifically three main ones, ser, ver and ir. Ser is to be, ver is to see, and ir is to go. So these are all, yeah, all, all the verbs basically that you need to remember that are imperfect in the, in so are irregular in the imperfect. That's the right way around. And also, if you look at them, they're not massively irregular. Okay, you need okay from ser to era is super irregular, but once you know era, the rest is pretty eras, era, eramos. It's it's it follows quite a regular pattern. It's got the mos for the we. It's got the eyes for the you guys. It's got the n for the um, they. It's got the s for the you singular. Okay, so it, it's feasible. And ver and ir. Mm, basically the same thing. Once you remember how the your form is, the rest is pretty easy to, to do. Okay. So veía, I used to see, veías, you used to see, etc. And then iba, I used to go, ibas, you used to go, and so on and so forth. Okay. So let me give you an, an example with uh, a few of these verbs. So for example, if I wanted to describe what my sister was like before, and I wanted to say that she was very shy, this is what the form I'm, I, I would take. Okay, so I would say, mi hermana, mi hermana era muy tímida. Mi hermana era muy tímida. If I wanted to say, we were watching TV last night, we were watching TV last night, maybe when the, you know, when someone arrived, we were watching TV. I would take this one. Veíamos. This is an eye, by the way. Just it doesn't look very much like an eye. Veíamos la tele anoche, last night, cuando llegó María. When María arrived. Okay. We were watching TV last night. Veíamos la tele anoche cuando llegó. Maria, okay? And if I wanted to say they used to go on holiday to the Canaries, okay? They used to go Ivan. So Ivan de vacaciones a las Canarias. Okay? So imperfect, easy, you know, relatively straightforward endings. Just you just need to remember when to use it, the three occasions when you need to use that imperfect. And the last thing really that you need to remember is a few expressions that um that you may need to use quite often with the imperfect. Okay. Things like for example, cuando cuando era pequeño o pequeña, when I was a child, when I was small, when I was little, o cuando cuando era más joven, when I was younger, or antes, before, okay? So think of time expressions that you could use to, when you want to talk about what things were like before, for example, okay? And that will, will help you frame the sentence a bit more um, correctly. Vale, the negative. Um, why do I personally think the negative is important? Okay, um, let me move this a little bit. It's a little bit, little bit off centre. Um, so why do I think it's important? Right, I personally think it's uh, the negative or, or being good at the negative is important for two reasons. One reason, reason number one, is for your listening and reading um, activities and, of course, exams. So, uh, if you hear, for example, the expression, I don't know, voy a la piscina, you will think, oh, this person goes to the swimming pool. But, of course, you will be mistaken if you don't hear the negative before. So, no voy a la piscina. 
or nunca voy a la piscina. I never go to the swimming pool. Okay, so really important to be really tuned in to these sort of expressions that can change completely the meaning of what you just heard. And the second reason is for writing, okay, for your writing or also could be for your speaking. And it's that being able to say what you don't do, what you've never done, what, um, you know, what you didn't see, what, okay, being able to say the negative, being able to use the negative or negative sentences makes um, your writing and your speaking more interesting, okay? Because, um, you know, let's face it, many of us lead pretty boring lives. So, of course, if we, all, if we can only talk and write about what we do do, it would be pretty boring. Now, once we start writing about what we don't do or never do or haven't done, then things become a little bit more interesting. So let's have a look at what are these negative expressions, these negative expressions that we must know. Okay. Now, the first one, the king or queen of negative expressions is no. Okay. No. And no, one thing that we need to remember is that it always appears before the verb. So how do we use no? Okay, so I can say voy a la piscina. Okay, I can say voy a la piscina. I go to the swimming pool. If I want to make this negative, because the verb is here, I'll say no, no voy a la piscina. I could say, Maria juega al baloncesto. Maria juega al baloncesto. Maria plays basketball. If I want to make it more interesting, Maria no juega al baloncesto because the verb is here. Okay. Um, I could say, mi primo es alto. My cousin is tall. If I want to make it more interesting, I could say mi primo no es alto because this is the verb. In this case, in the case of um, uh, what is called descriptions, it's a very common thing to say, for example, instead of, you know, in this case, I could say mi primo no es alto, which would mean the same as mi primo is bajo. My cousin is short. Okay, but it, this is a bit of a more interesting sentence than this one because it contains a negative. Okay, so this first expression, no, is probably the most important one. Okay, and it's, and can you see, it's super easy to use. So no, um, no, no excuses at all. The other expression that is very good is ni, ni. Okay, so two knees um, yeah, separated by a phrase or a, or a noun. And what is this ni? Ni, ni is basically the equivalent of neither, nor. Okay, neither, nor. So, what do I mean by this? So, I could have a sentence, like, for example, uh, me gustan, me gustan las manzanas, y las peras. Me gustan las manzanas y las peras. I like apples and pears. Okay, fine. This is a normal statement. No negatives involved. Now, what involved? What would happen if I actually didn't like either of them? Okay, so in that case, I need first, I need the negative no, okay, in front of the verb in this case this we're going to consider this the verb and then i'm going to have one ni in front of the first thing that i don't like and ni in front of the second thing that i don't like so i'll say no me gustan ni las manzanas and then i'll replace this e and for ni ni las peras okay no me gustan ni las manzanas ni las peras okay um another Another example, I, I could, another thing I could say. I could say, um, let's say that yesterday 
I yesterday I worked and I read okay so I could say ayer leí uh, y trabajé ayer leí y trabajé but so this would be yesterday I read and I worked now if I wanted to say that yesterday I didn't read and I didn't work then I could say ayer ni leí ni trabajé okay in this case because what this ni is in front of a verb okay leí trabajé we don't need the no okay it's, it's already um, sort of understood okay uh, but let's have one last example so if I wanted to say um, let's say this sentence tengo un perro y un gato. Okay, I have a dog and a cat. If I want to say I haven't got a dog or a cat, then I would say no tengo, of course this T would be little, ni un perro ni un gato. Okay, so do remember, I need the no in front of the verb. When this ni happens to be in front, so when I'm saying that there are, when I'm when I'm um, saying, uh, like in this case, where, where I've got what I'm negating, the two things are verbs, then I don't need it. But otherwise, I do need this no. Okay, so no tengo ni un perro ni un gato. Okay, now, uh, what other things have I got? What other negative expressions have I got? Okay, the next one I'm going to look at is tampoco. Tampoco, which is a bit, it's again, it's a little bit like a neither, but after, after a negative sentence. Okay, so for example, if I wanted to say, I could have two sentences. Mm. Uh, da, 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 da. Or, or let's uh, I just thought of something it's probably it's probably the opposite of tambien okay tambien is also uh, tampoco is a little bit like you would say like also no okay it's a little bit it's a bit little bit like that to to uh, understand each other so let's say I wanted to say I haven't got a car I haven't got a, a motorbike either okay like it's this neither so I haven't got a car no Tengo coche. Now I haven't got a motorbike either. Would be tampoco tengo moto. Okay, and this tampoco at the beginning of the sentence, it's that either. Okay, you're not either, or also I don't have. Okay, it's a little bit like that. Also I don't have. Um. If I wanted to say, um, for example, I didn't buy the I didn't buy the dress, I didn't buy the shirt either. Okay, so I could say no compré el vestido tampoco uh, compré la camisa. Okay, and we would have this tampoco here okay so also I didn't buy that okay so nice and interesting interesting expression this tampoco another good expression to do negative to, to use in um, with negatives is nada nada is nothing nothing or not no not anything okay so a, a normal between inverted quote sentence could be for example compré Compré fruta en el supermercado. I bought mercado. I bought fruit at the supermarket. It is, if instead of this, I wanted to say I didn't buy anything at the supermarket, I would need the no. And then instead of fruta, no compré nada. I didn't buy anything or nothing at the supermarket. Okay. Um, for example, I haven't got anything. If I want to say I haven't got anything, I would say no 
tengo nada. No tengo nada. And I have the no and I have the nada. So in Spanish, you know, in, in, in a way I'm saying I haven't got or I don't have nothing sort of thing. Okay. I don't have nothing. Just if, if that makes a little bit more sense. Okay. So nice expression as well. This nada. Another nice negative expression is nunca. Nunca. Which is never or not ever. So, for example, I have the sentence voy a la playa. Voy a la playa. I go to the beach. If I want to say I don't go to the beach, sorry, I never go, go to the beach, I would say nunca voy a la playa. Okay? Nunca voy a la playa. Um, I could say um, I will travel to Paris. Okay? Viajaré a París. But if I wanted to say I will never travel to Paris, I would say nunca viajaré a París. Okay? So notice how this nunca gives us a little bit more play on what things we can talk about in terms of things that we do, we will do or won't do, okay, etc. Really good to remember as well with this nunca are nunca expressions with nunca plus the um, perfect. So I could say nunca he visitado, for example, Estados Unidos. Nunca he visitado Estados Unidos. I have never visited I have never visited the United States. So using the perfect with nunca really opens up again a lot of expressions for things that we haven't done. Okay. Uh, nunca he jugado un partido. I have never played a match. Okay. He jugado is the perfect. So again, you know, opening up things, ideas, thing, you know, things you can talk about. And then finally, the last negative expression I'm going to use will be nadie. Nadie is nobody. Okay, nobody or no, not anyone. So <clears throat> I could, ex I could, um, I could use it in, for example, if, you know, again, if I had a, a, a normal sentence, I could say, for example, be, be a Maria. Vi a María en el parque. I saw María at the park. But now I want to say that I didn't see anyone at the park. I didn't see anyone at the park. So all I need to do is say no vi a nadie. No vi a nadie <coughs> en el parque. Okay? No vi a nadie en el parque. If I wanted to say there was nobody, for example, no había nadie. There was nobody at the party. No había nadie en la fiesta. Okay, so again, no and nadie. So this nadie, generally speaking, needs the no in front. Okay, so we've got here a few, you know, quite a few interesting expressions in the negative that should expand the stuff you've got to talk about and to write about. Okay, so please, 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 I hope these year's examiners, GCSE examiners, you know, stop finding time and time again, juego al fútbol. Okay. Tell us, mention one thing you do, but also tell us what you don't do. Okay. Because that's actually much more, it's going to be much, much more interesting. So let's have a look at how we can ask questions in Spanish. This is especially useful for the speaking component of the of the assessment, of course, the, where, where you have to ask questions, but also if you do, whenever you're doing listening, reading or even writing, you need to make sure that you understand what questions you're being asked in order to answer them appropriately. So really, really important um, chapter. So the first thing we need to look at when we are thinking about asking questions is obviously the question words. Okay, question words. We can't ask certain questions without knowing some specific vocabulary, some specific words. And what are these words? Okay, so in Spanish, these words are some of the most important. It's probably que, okay, que, which is what. So an example of these would be, for example, um, ¿Qué 
¿Qué estudias? ¿Qué estudias? What do you study? ¿Qué estudias? So, ¿qué is what? Another important uh, question would be... Oh, sorry. Another important question word would be ¿Quién? O ¿Quiénes? ¿Quién o quiénes? Who? I could say ¿Quién vive allí? Okay, but when I know that the per what who I'm asking about is more than one person, for when I know for a fact that who I'm asking about is more than one person, I would use quiénes. So for ex for example, I could say quiénes vinieron a la fiesta. Quiénes vinieron a la fiesta? Who came to the party? Another important um, question word is dónde. Donde, where, donde. So I could say, for example, donde están las llaves? Donde están las llaves? Where are the keys? Another important word would be como, como, how. So I could say, <clears throat> como es el vestido, literally, how is the dress. So this como is how, but it's also, <clears throat> sorry, it's also what like, okay, what's it like. So in this case, this would be a what is the dress like, what's it like. But if I ask, for example, um, como estas, Como estás? In that case, como is how. How are you? Okay. Another important question word would be por qué? Por qué? Why? Por qué? So an example of sentence would be Por qué no te gusta? Por qué no te gusta? Why don't you like this? ¿Por qué no te gusta? Another question word would be ¿Cuál? Which one? Or I could say ¿Cuáles? Which ones? Okay, depending on whether I'm asking about one thing or more than one. So I could say ¿Cuál de estos pasteles? Quieres. Now, the reason why I've put this between brackets, ¿cuál quieres? Which one do you want? Or I could say, which of these cakes do you want? Okay, so these brackets would be, um, you would choose whether to use it or not. Or I could say also, ¿cuáles? ¿Cuáles quieres? Which ones do you like? Okay, and the final uh, question word we're going to look at here is going to be, ¿cuánto? Cuánta, cuántos, o cuántas, which means which one for cuánto and cuánta, or which ones for cuántos and cuántas. So I could say, um, for example, I don't know, cuántos plátanos has comprado? Cuántos plátanos has comprado? How many bananas have you bought? Okay. So, really important question words. You can't ask questions most of the time if you don't know question words. Important to know as well is that you can combine these question words with prepositions to create other question words. What do I mean by this? Okay, you know that the word de means of, yes? Okay, so uh, of or from, okay? De means of or from. I know that donde is where. So if I want to say where from, I'm going to ask de donde. So I put a preposition before the um, question word and de donde is where from. Another example could be that, for example, uh, para is for. Okay? So if I want to ask who for, 
So I know that who is quien. So I could ask para quien. So for example, para quien es el regalo. Who is the present for? Okay, so do bear in mind these prepositions that if they're in front of um, question words, they may change the, the, um, the question slightly. Okay, so do bear these in mind. So if we go properly to how we ask questions, we will see, I mean, we've seen here some examples. Que estudias, quien vive allí. ¿Quiénes vinieron a una fiesta? ¿Dónde están las llaves? ¿Cómo es el vestido? Okay. And there are two ways, two things we need to bear in mind to, um, when, we are, when we're trying to ask questions. So, if I do... And I'm going to do two, one up, one down, just to remind you that in Spanish we need opening question mark and closing question marks. So there are two types of questions. One type of question is questions with question word. Questions with question word, which we could ask, which we could call open answer questions, okay? What do I mean by this? Any of these questions above are questions with question words. So they are questions where the answer is not just going to see to be sí or no. It's not just going to be yes or no. Okay? If I say qué estudias, what do you study? I'm not going to say sí or no. I'm going to give an answer where it's going to be at least the name of a subject. Estudio matemáticas. Okay, so when in this type of questions, if we look at, you know, if we look at, for example, this question, ¿Dónde están las llaves? Or this one, ¿Cómo es el vestido? We may see how we've done this question. So let me write the question again here. ¿Dónde, dónde están las llaves? And if I write the question here and we look at this question, we may quickly work out at how we ask this type of question. The questions where the answer is not yes or no. So what do we have? So on first of all, we've got the question word, donde, where. Then we have the word están, which is the verb of the sentence. And then we have las llaves, which is the subject of the sentence, is what is, yeah, or what are, where are the keys. Yeah, the keys is the subject. So we've got here, we see here that this type of question follows the, in this type of question, the subject and the verb are in the um, opposite order of what would be a normal sentence. So if I said, for example, the keys are on the table, that would be las llaves están en la mesa. Las llaves están en la mesa. The, the keys are on the table. And this sentence, which is a statement, a normal statement, follows the normal order in Spanish, which is the subject, then the verb, and then the complements. Okay? However, here in the question, we can see that the subject is here and the verb is here. So the order has reversed. Okay? So this is the first thing to remember, that when there is a question word, Generally speaking, the subject and the verb will be in reverse. Okay? So, um, let me give you another example. If, I, if instead of where are the keys, I wanted to say, for example, when did Alex arrive? When did Alex arrive? Okay, when is cuando. When did Alex arrive? So now I need the he arrived, llegó. And now I need Alex because he is the subject of the verb. He is the one who arrived. Okay. So again, here I have the verb. Here I have the subject. If I wanted to say Alex arrived at three, then that would be Alex llegó a las tres. Okay. And in this case, we have the normal subject verb order of the sentence. But in the question, because the question's got a question word, has, is started with a question word, I need to reverse the order. Okay? So, this, as far as the questions with question words are concerned, but what happens when the questions are without 
question word. And generally, these will be um, questions that require a yes, no answer. In that case, it's easy peasy. The sentence order stays the same as in the statement, okay, as in normal affirmative or a normal statement. What do I mean by this? By this, what I mean is that um, let's say I have the I have the sentence uh, Luis fue al monte, okay. Luis fue al monte. Luis went to the hills. Went up the hills. Okay, this is a statement. Now, if instead of stating that Luis went to the hills, fue, Luis fue al monte, I want to ask, did Luis go to the hills, go up to the hills? Yeah, can you see that this question would, would require a yes or no answer? Yeah. Um, in that case, all I would need to do would be in Spanish, put question marks. Or if I'm saying it, I would just change the intonation. Luis fue al monte instead of Luis fue al monte. So if you can see here, the order of the sentence has stayed exactly the same. All that's changed is the intonation of the sentence. And when we're writing it, uh, question marks before and after. OK, another let's give let's have another example. Let's say um, let's have, let's have a look at this sentence. Tu abuela, tu abuela compró manzanas. Your grandma bought apples. So this is a statement. Your grandma bought apples. Tu abuela compró manzanas. If I want to ask, did your grandma buy apples? Which would require a yes or no answer. Yes, they, yes, she did. No, she didn't. Did your grandma buy apples? How would I ask this? This? Easy. In, in, in written form, just add question marks before and after. In spoken form, tu abuela compró manzanas? Tu abuela compró manzanas? I just change the intonation and here is the question done. OK, so these there are these two ways of doing of asking questions. One, if I'm requiring, if I'm asking for information, if I'm not asking just for yes or no, if I'm asking when, where, how, why, uh, how many. OK, in that case, I'm going to follow this procedure. Start with the question word and change the order of uh, subject and verb. Otherwise, if I'm asking for a, if I'm asking a yes or no question, just take the sentence, the same sentence as the statement and just change the intonation or add opening and closing um, question marks. And there is your question without any other alteration. OK, so I hope this makes sense. Um, and yeah, of course, do use it and do practice it because it's the only way of really getting it into your head. OK, so the preterite is a form, okay, is a, is a tense of the past, is a form of a past tense. And what we use, you know, what, what we use it for is to talk about past events, okay, past events. And by this, I mean things that happened, okay, things that happened or things that somebody did. OK, very, very important. We don't use it for past descriptions. OK, what something was like, because we use the imperfect for that. And we don't use it for past habits. OK, things I used to do. Remember, we also use imperfect for that. So for things like past Past events, I went, I saw, I played, I learned, I sang, I watched, we danced, we, okay, all of that would be preterite. So, um, things to bear in mind is some very often when we use preterite with it, okay, with it, we will use certain time frames, sorry, or, or, or time phrases. OK, what time phrases are going to be closely associated with the preterite? Things like ayer, yesterday, ante ayer, the day before yesterday, uh, el mes pasado, last month, la semana pasada, last week, el año 
pasado, last uh, year, hace, hace tres años, three years ago, hace tres meses, three months ago, hace tres semanas, three weeks ago. Okay, so all of these, all of these time phrases would usually uh, take us to talk about something that happened, something that happened yesterday, the day before, last month, etc. So they would generally be followed by the preterite. Okay, so let's see how we build the preterite. If you know how to build all the tenses, the present, the imperfect, the preterite follows exactly the same pattern, exactly the same model. So we've got, for example, here the verb viajar, viajar to travel. And what we do here to build the preterite is we get rid of the AR ending because this is this is a model. We're going to use viajar as a model of an AR type of verb. So uh, the type of verb where when I look it up in the dictionary, the form would end in AR. So what I'm going to do is get rid of the AR and in its case, in its place, I'm going to use these endings. So viaje for I travel, aste, viajaste for you traveled. O viajó, for he or she traveled. Amos, for the we traveled. Asteis, for you guys traveled. Aaron, for they traveled. Okay, so following this three, this same pa uh, pattern, if instead of viajar, I had cantar, to sing, and I wanted to say we sang, I would do exactly the same. I would get rid of the AR, and in its place, I would use the amos, and I would have cantamos. Okay. Now, you may notice that I've put, uh, there's a slight separation between this form and the other two. And that's because comer, so verbs that end in ER, and salir, so verbs that end in IR, follow the same endings as each other. Okay. So if you see the verb endings here, and the verb endings here for the different persons are exactly the same. And these are different from the ones here. So in the preterite, you need to learn two different sets, two different sets of endings. One set of endings for the AR verbs, another set of endings for the ER and IR verbs. Okay, so a verb in ER, what we're going to do in order to conjugate it and put it in preterite, I'm going to get rid of the ER and in its place I'll add an I if it's I ate, for example, comí, iste, comiste, I ate, yo, comió, um, he or she ate, imos, comimos, we ate, isteis, comisteis, you guys ate, yeron, comieron, they ate. And the same I'm going to do with IR verbs, exactly the same. If I want to conjugate salir, to go out, I'll get rid of the IR and I'll say salí, saliste, salió, salimos, salisteis, salieron. Okay, and the same for the same procedure, I, um, I would follow exactly the same for any regular verb that ends in ER or IR. So for example, if instead of um, we ate, I wanted to say we drank, beber is to drink, so I would get rid of the ER. And for we drank, I would say bebimos, okay? And so on and so forth. So doing the preterite is relatively easy. The only thing you need to bear in mind is that there are quite a lot of irregular verbs. Okay, so let's look at some of the most common irregular verbs. The first group of irregular verbs is the one that's made up by these verbs. These are, these are although it looks like two, there are actually three verbs here. Why is that? Because this form here, okay, this is the form, the six forms of the preterite of two different verbs, of the verb ser and the verb ir. Ser is to be, ir is to go. But for some reason, in the preterite, they've got the same forms. So, fui is going to be I went or I was, depending on the context. Fuiste is going to be you went, you went, or you were, depending on the context. Fue is going to be he went or he was, depending on the context, and so on. So, you're only going to know, depending on the sentence, whether it's to go or to be. So, for example, if I have 
fuimos de vacaciones, fuimos de vacaciones, will be we went on holidays. Okay, we went on holiday. But if I said fuimos um, afortunados, fuimos afortunados, that will be we were lucky. Okay, so depending on the sentence, depending on what other information is on the sentence, I will know whether it is the preterite of ser or the preterite of ir. In either case, they are irregular, they've got an irregular um, preterite, and you, to be honest, all you can do is learn them. Okay, so just remember that it stands with fu and then you add the endings. Okay, now the other irregular verb is ver, which is to see. Okay, and again, it's slightly irregular as well. Okay, vimos, visteis, vieron. Important to remember what the endings are. And if I had to have a sentence, I could say, for example, ayer vi una película. Yesterday, I saw or I watched a film. Okay, so these two verbs, or three, are important to learn in the past tense because, or in the preterite, because they are some of the more, most common verbs that you are going to need, especially, especially this one. Okay. Now the other group of verbs that is worth um, bearing in mind is this one here. And what happens here? We've got here these verbs. And by the way, I've got here a little problem, a little mistake. I've got a d here, d here that I've mistaken put an S, so this should be P-U-D, PUD, okay? I've got these verbs here, these uh, seven verbs here, that are pretty, pretty irregular. Why is that? First of all, they've got the endings are different, okay? If you look, E, ISTE, O, okay, they are different from the verbs, the endings here. Notice that E is, it hasn't got an accent, the O hasn't got an accent either, okay? So they are the endings are already a little bit different. But also, instead of taking the stem, okay, instead of taking, for example, in the case of hacer, when I do the preterite, instead of taking the, um, the stem, take away the er and add the ending, I'm not going to take this stem here, I'm going to take this, okay? So if I wanted to say I did, because hacer is to do, so not only, I, so I need to take the H I C eth, not take a ther, but eth, and then at the ending ethe. Okay. If I want to say we did, again I would take the eth, and then at the ending for the we emos. Okay. If I wanted to say they did, I would take the eth, and then at the ieron, which is the ending for the they. Oh, no s n for the they. Okay, and the same happens with poner, to put, we'll do pus, so we will say puse, pusiste, puso, estar, to be is the other the other verb, estar, the one for to be at a place, etc. So estuve, so I, for example, I, I was on holiday, would be estuve de vacaciones. So notice how instead of taking est, est, I've taken a stub and added the ending, okay? Haber, to have or to there be, would be ub. So, for example, if I want to say there was a strike, I would say ubo, because it's there was. Una huelga, okay? Ubo. Poder will do pud, saber will do sup, and tener will do tub. Okay, so if I want to say they had a baby, I could say tuvieron, tuvieron, taking the tub and the hieron, tuvieron un bebe. Okay? So really important to bear in mind some of these verbs. There are some that may not be as common, okay, that you may not encounter so often, but a verb like hacer, tener, uh, and probably haber and estar are probably the most common ones that you should bear in mind. Okay, that the, 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 the stem changes. Okay, finally, the last thing I'm going to mention is some, um, I will call it common spelling, spelling 
changes, spelling changes, they're pretty common within in the preterite. And we'll see, let me show you what I mean by spelling changes, right? I've got, for example, this verb here, hacer. Okay, we've seen that in the preterite, hacer doesn't do this, it takes eth and then the ending. Okay, now, if I want to say he or she did, I would take the eth and then I would take the o. Okay, so I've got hice, hiciste, I would need hizo, hicimos, hicisteis, hicieron. Yeah, okay. The problem though is that if I read this here, it doesn't say hizo. Here it says ico, because C before O sounds K, not TH. So in this case, because I need it to start to still sound like a TH, I need to change this C for a TH, ITHO. Okay? So what I, need to, and what I need to remember here is that if I do want to do the TH sound, I will use a C in front of E or I, this will be C and C, but I will use a Z in front of A, O, U to make THA, THO, THU, okay? Because this, this sounds ka, ko, ku, okay? So bear this in mind. Another thing that you may, that you may also want to keep in mind, bear in mind, is for example, what happens with a verb like SAKAR, to take out, okay? If I want to say I took out, I would take, I would get rid of the AR and I would add the E with the accent for the I took out. But if I read this, okay, this doesn't say sake as it would need to be. This says sace, exactly the opposite of what was happening before. Yeah, so here it sounds th and I want it to sound like k. So if I want it to sound ke, I need. I need a Q, U. Okay, so K in front of E or I, I need a Q, U. So instead of this, this is going to become sake. Okay, but notice this is not an irregularity. This is just from, for spelling purposes because otherwise it would read differently. Okay, so it is important that you remember this okay what are what the combination of sounds so that that to do th it's c in front of e and i c c z in front of a o u tha th tha thu but in order to do k it's c in front of a o u ka ko ku but q u in front in front of e or i ke ki okay the last one i'm going to mention is this one Jugué, okay, you will have probably have seen it already, and this is similar to here. If I want to do the sound g, okay, the sound g uses a g in front of a, yo, o, u, but if I want to say g and g, I need g, u, okay. So again, oh, I'm running out low on battery. Um, again, do uh, remember these sort of sound combinations so that. You, basically so that you, you can spell things properly and also that you don't get too disconcerted when you see that suddenly a Q or a G U has appeared out of nowhere. Okay, This happens especially in the preterite. It happens in other tenses, but especially in the preterite. So, future tenses in general are pretty straightforward, much more straightforward than present uh, forms or past forms, which there are plenty of. And we're going to look here at three especially, okay? Future is, is going to be important in all sorts of topics, okay? You could you could be asked about most of the topics you may want to, you may, you may have to write about. You will probably want to add something on the future. We're going to focus especially on the topic of um, of school and studies and education, which is what which we're, we're doing today. But of course, whatever you do um, here, you can transfer to any other topic. So the three future tenses we're going to look at of, of forms are going to be the near future, okay, the near future, the simple future, and the conditional. Okay, near future, simple future, and conditional. And for those of you who are going like, what's that? The near future is the equivalent of, for example, saying in English, I am going 
to study. Okay, so this would be near future. Simple future would be the equivalent of saying, I will study. So remember, in Spanish, we don't have such a word as will. Um, we will just do that with endings. And the conditional would be the equivalent of, I would study. Okay, I would study. So again, in Spanish, we haven't got this word, would. Uh, the same would apply to won't or wouldn't. Okay, we will go, we will have a look at how we would do these expressions, won't and wouldn't. Now, conditional, there's question marks over whether it can be considered to be a future tense. Strictly speaking, it's not. It's conditional. It's not something that's going to happen. It's something that would happen if all the circumstances happened. But in terms of GCSE bunching, it tends to be sort of lumped into the future tenses. And when, for example, they tell you uh, use three tenses, they will be expecting you to use present, a form of the past and a form of the future, amongst which the conditional will count as a future. Okay, so that's why I'm putting it with the future tenses. Now, before we start looking at future tenses, something very important that we must never forget when we are using future tenses, which is time expressions to talk about the future. Okay, it's very good to use the future tense, but use expressions as well, because it's going to make it sound be much, much better. So what expressions could I use? Okay, to start with, I could use things like en el futuro, en el futuro, in the future. Or I could use something like más más adelante, later on, más adelante. If I'm talking about this topic, school or college, I could talk about, for example, el año próximo, next year, or what's the same, el próximo año. This word próximo can be before or after año. I could also talk about el próximo curso, el próximo curso, next academic year, curso is the word for ac academic year. I could also talk about después, después del verano, after the summer, okay? And then I could use some other beautiful expressions which contain, uh, what's it called, present subjunctive, which I would really, especially those of you aiming for higher papers, or aiming, aiming for, you know, for, for higher grades, do use some of these expressions, okay? If, if you happen to be writing about, uh, about um, school law or, or further education, do use some of the following. Nice expressions would be, for example, cuando, cuando termine mis exámenes. Cuando termine mis exámenes, when I finish my exams. And this word termine is using present subjunctive. Another one, cuando, cuando haga bachillerato, cuando haga bachillerato, when I do sixth form, haga, present subjunctive, cuando vaya, cuando vaya a la universidad. When I go to university, vaya, present subjunctive. Cuando tenga, cuando tenga 18 años, when I am 18, okay, tenga, present subjunctive of tener, to have. Or finally, cuando sea mayor when I am older, when I'm a grown-up sort of thing. Okay, sea is the present subjunctive of ser. Now, please don't think that now every time you use cuando, you're going to have to use present subjunctive. That's not the case. You only use present subjunctive when that cuando, that when, is something in the future. Okay, so if you notice, all these events are going to happen in the future. Okay, so that's why we use present subjunctive. Other time expressions, if you are sort of talking outside of the of the topic of of school, other time expressions that you could use in the future could be, for example, using similar to this el año próximo or el próximo año, we could say la 
próxima, la próxima semana, next week, o el próximo, el próximo mes. But we could also use things like, for example, dentro de tres años, in three years time, o dentro de tres meses, in three months time, o dentro de tres días, in three days time. So do remember this expression, dentro de, plus the time, which means in however many days, months, years, weeks, time. Okay, don't forget this expression because it's really, really good. So let's now look properly at the tenses and let's start with this one here, which is the near, near future. Okay, and let's remember it's equivalent of saying something like I am going to study, for example, okay? So it tends to be used for things that are pretty certain that you are going to do, okay? That's that's what the, the, the point of the boya um, tends to be. And how does it work? So look, we've got here boy, vas, va, vamos, vais, van. And what is this? This is the present of the verb ir, which means to go, okay? So it's the present of ir. Boy is I go, vas is you go, va is he or she goes, vamos, we go, vais, you guys go, van, they go. Okay? So I use the present of ir, I follow it, I, I add to it the a, okay, which is the Spanish for to. Notice I don't miss it, okay? And then after that, I use the infinitive, infinitive of any verb. Okay, of whatever verb I want to use. So in this case, I want to say I'm going to study. So notice I've got the infinitive, so the form of the dictionary of study. Estudiar, estudiar, and it's the same for every single person. Okay, so this bit doesn't change. The a doesn't change. The only bit that changes is the form of the present of ir. Okay, so this is the only bit that changes. Okay, so if I want to say... Um, so it's, if instead of estudiar, let's say I've, I've got the verb aprender to learn, aprender. So if I want to say, I don't know, at university, I will learn physics. I would say, en la universidad, en la universidad. And then I would take aprender, all of it, aprender. And then because it's I will, oh, sorry. <laughs> what am I talking about? Uh, en la universidad, I am going to learn. So el, I, I am going to learn. So because it's I, I'm going to use the boy. Then I need the a. And then the aprender. Voy a aprender. What did I say? Physics? Física. I can't remember now if I said physic, physics or chemistry. But anyway, física. Okay. Now, if instead of I am going to learn, I wanted to say we are going to learn. The sentence would stay the same, en la universidad, the only thing that would change is the boy, for, because it would be, we are going to, vamos, okay, vamos a aprender física, and so on and so forth. So using the near future is really, really easy. It always follows the same pattern, and very importantly, there are no exceptions, there are no irregular verbs. So if you're a bit insecure with your tenses, if you don't feel very confident, the near future is a great one to use, okay? Now, if you've got a little bit more confidence, if you are, you know, a, a little bit better at, rem at remembering your, all your endings and the different forms, I would really advise you to use, go for the simple future when you're talking, when you're using, um, referring to future events, you can use the near future, it's fine, but the simple future tends to show off a little bit more, okay? So, simple future. And what's a simple future equivalent? Okay, so this is the equivalent of saying, I will study. Okay, I will study. So, how do I do the simple future? It's, again, it's pretty straightforward, just mm, there's a little bit more to it than the, than the simple, than the near future. What do I do? I take the infinitive, so the form of the dictionary, estudiar in this case, so I take the infinitive, the whole of it, I don't get rid of anything, and then after it, I add the endings, okay, which I've got here. 
there's, there aren't three sets of endings, just one set of endings for all the futures, okay? For, for, for all the future that, yeah, it doesn't, it, it doesn't matter what verb it is. So in this case, of course, I've got the infinitive, estudiar, and then e for yo, as for tu, a for el o ella, hemos for we, es for you guys, and for they. So if instead of estudiar, I have, for example, let's think... Uh, aprobar, to pass. Let's say I will pass maths, okay? Aprobar. So aprobar is to pass. So I will say, I want to say I will pass maths. Let me, uh, maths, maths. I will pass maths. Okay, so the first thing I need to remember is that in Spanish there's no I will so or I need to take and think of it as the whole thing, will pass, okay? So, aprobar is to pass. And because it's I will, then I need the E, okay? Aprobaré. Matemáticas. If instead of to pass, we had the verb suspender, to fail. Let's say I wanted to say they will fail art, okay? They will fail art, okay? So they will fail, I need the verb suspender. And then I need the they will, which is the an, and then art, dibujo. Suspenderan dibujo, okay? So every single time, infinitive and then whatever ending I did depending on who will do the action. If I wouldn't, if I wanted to use a negative, a future, so it, like here, if I, instead of I will pass maths, I wanted to say I won't pass maths, all I need to do is write a no before aprobaré. And in that case, of course, the A would need to be a little one. So no aprobaré matemáticas. That's all I need. Okay, so I don't need any funny doings because it's won't. Okay, same thing here. If I wanted to say they will not fail art. So here it says they will fail art. If I want to say they will not fail art, all I need to do is write the no in front. And of course, the S would become a small one because it's not starting a sentence. Okay, so don't be misled, don't be, don't panic when you see a won't. All you need to do, like in any other tense, just put a no in front and do the 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 future normally. Okay. Now the one thing you need to remember: there are few irregulars. Okay, if you look here, okay, on the right hand side here, you've got this list of irregular verbs. Some of them are more common than others. I would bear in mind, for example, especially verbs like tener, to have. Querer, to want, poder, to be able to, um, or salir, to go out, because they are irregular in the future. And the, what the irregularity consists of is that rather than taking the whole of the infinitive, for example, here in salir, okay, if I wanted to say I will go out, if it was regular, I would say salir, and then I will is the E, saliré. But that's not right because what does it what, what it does is that instead of salir it takes this is the sort of infinitive an inverted quote that we are going to use. So instead of salire, I will do saldr and then e. So with irregular verbs, the endings are still regular. What's irregular is that instead of taking the whole of the infinitive and that's it, you take a sort of a funny infinitive, okay? You take this form. So, for example, in the verb tener, to have, if I want to say we will have, I wouldn't say tener hemos, I would say, I would take this, tender, and then I add the hemos, tenderemos, okay? And then let's have a look at the conditional. So, at the conditional, which is the I would, and in this case, for example, I would study. So how does the conditional work? Dead easy as well, very similar to the future, simple future. And it's that, again, I take the whole of the infinitive, so I've got the form of the dictionary, infinitive, I haven't dropped anything, and then 
I add at the ending, these are the endings I use. Ia, Ias, Ia, Iamos, Iais, Ian. And if you want a few more good news, is that if you look, these endings are the same as the endings for the imperfect of ER and IR verbs, okay? So if you do the imperfect of an ER or IR verb, you're going to be using the same um, endings. The only difference is that in that case you would get rid of the AR ending, but in the, in, the, in the conditional we are not getting rid of that ending, okay? So estudiaría is I would study, estudiarías, you would study, estudiaría, he or she would study, estudiaríamos, we would study, estudiaríais, you guys would study, estudiarían, they would study, okay? Now, expressions, often this conditional may, may um, follow constructions like, for example, um, constructions starting with C. So, for example, I don't know, si pudiera, if I could, or si tuviera dinero, if I had the money, or si aprobara, if I passed, okay, these are all expressions with imperfect subjunctive, okay, so don't worry too much, but you may want to learn some of these expressions, so let's say, si pudiera, uh, so if I could, I would study science, si pudiera, estudiaría, estudiaría ciencias, now if instead of I would study, I wanted to say, um, I would, si pudiera, um, oh, let's say, if I could, I would go to university, okay? If I could, I would go to university, okay? So, if I could, si pudiera, I would go to university. How would I say this? I would go to uni, okay? So, all I need to do is think, okay, I would go. What verb is this? Go. Go is to go is ir, okay? And then I need the I would, I would. So the I would is the ia ending. Iria a la universidad. And that's all we need, okay? If instead of I would go, is would you want to say we would go. So again, I would say ir, to go. And then iamos, iríamos a la universidad. That would be we would go to university. In the same way as with the um, simple future, again, if I wanted to say I wouldn't go, okay, all I need to do is think again, okay, so I wouldn't go is I would go in the negative. So I would go is iria, so in the negative is no iria. So all I need to do to do the uh, negative of the conditional is put a no before. No estudiaría ciencias, I wouldn't study sciences. No iría a la universidad, I wouldn't go to university. No iríamos a la universidad, we wouldn't go to university. And it's easy peasy. Okay? Now the last thing I want to say about this is that the conditional has exactly the same irregular verbs as the future and it, they work exactly in the same way. Okay? So, in the case of, for, for example, I gave you the example of salir, that doesn't do, in the future, doesn't do saliré, but saldré, if I want to say I will go out. In this case, if I wanted to say I would go out, I would do exactly the same. So, I wouldn't say salir ia, but salder, and then ia. Okay, that would, that's I would go out. If I want to say we would go out, that would be salder and then íamos, okay? If I wanted to say, I don't know, they would have, I would do tender and then because it's they, it would be ían, okay? And so on and so forth. So really useful to know near future, simple future, conditional and to get using them. Okay, so modal verbs, verbos modales, what are these? Okay, these verbs help us say things like um, what I or someone should do, wants to do, um, has to do, needs to do, 
okay? So it's modal verbs, yes, I, I, I have things like um, to have to, must, need, um, things like shall or should. Okay, these are these are all model verbs, and they are really important because they they help us add a little bit of um, different different um, sort of nuances to what we say. Okay, allow us not to say you know all make it really factual. This is what it is. This is what I do. This is where I go. This is where I went. No, it's like this is what I have to do. This is what I'm going. No, not sorry, not I'm going to do. This is what I need to do. This is what I should do. This is what I'd like to do. Okay. Um, so firstly, they add interest. Okay, they make our writing a bit better. They also allow us allow us to, for example, give advice. It's the sort of thing that um, when we earlier when we were talking about um, healthy living, we were saying things like, for example, um, yeah, tengo tengo que comer. I don't know. Tengo que comer. If I want to say tengo que comer más verdura. Okay, this tengo que is the I have to. So in a way, I'm using a modal. Okay, but also we can use this to give advice. So I can say, tienes, tienes que comer más verdura o más um, legumbres, for example. Okay, I could also say instead of tienes que, I could also use debes, debes comer. Okay, we'll see them in a second. The other thing is that if you look at this at this example, for example, okay, tienes que, or if I use the debes, debes comer, okay, or if I wanted to say um, necesito, necesito, um, I don't know, perder peso, I need to lose weight, or quiero ser voluntario. O voluntaria, quiero ser voluntaria. Okay, here I'm using modal verbs to start with. And then notice what happens here. Quiero comer, quiero perder, quiero ser. These modal verbs, whether they're in the present, past, future, they are followed, okay, they're followed, followed by infinitive. Okay, they're followed, oh, you know, not infinitive, inf <laughs> infinitive. They're followed by a verb in the infinitive form. So this means that even if I'm using, even if the verb I'm going to be using after that um, modal verb is going to be a very irregular verb, it doesn't matter because I'm just going to be using it in the infinitive. So, you know, verbs that you may, we may be a bit, bit scared of sometimes are verbs like tener or ser or estar or ir or ver, okay, some verbs can be, tend to be irregular in many ways. Okay, if I just say, you know, if instead of saying, for example, um, I see this, I say, I need to see this, or I want to see this, it doesn't matter then whether ver is regular or irregular, because what I'm going to be using is the infinitive, okay, after the, the conjugated verb. So yes, okay, you have to learn the um, the modal verb and the conjugation of the modal verb. But once you know that, which, to be honest, they are very common verbs, um, what comes after is very easy. Okay, so the verbs we're going to see are these here. So here we've got them in their present form. So this tener, tener, and I've put the que, okay, que is not part of the verb. This is to, to, have to. Okay, so this que is like this to, in a way. Okay, and the tener is to have. Deber, it's basically, it's like the must. Okay, necesitar is need, to need. Poder is to be able to, or can. Okay, and querer is want. Okay, so here we've got the the forms in the present. And as you will be able to see, some of them are irregular. So for example, tener, you already know the verb tener. So tengo que, tienes que, noticing irregularity here, tiene que, 
tenemos que, tenéis que, tienen que. Okay? So, for example, if I want to say um, we have to, um, I don't know, we have to um, give money. I don't know why someone would have to rather than want to, but anyway. Tenemos, tenemos que dar dinero, okay? So because it's we have to, we need this tenemos que, okay? Tenemos que, and give money is dar in the infinitive followed by money, okay? Um, the verb deber in the present tense in the present tense is completely regular. Yo debo, I must, tú debes, you must, él ella debe, debemos, debéis, deben, completely regular. An example of this could be, for example, um, they must exercise more. They must exercise more. Okay, I'm going to take this one because it's they, deben. Deben, and then to, in Spanish we would say to do more exercise. Deben hacer más ejercicio. Okay? And deben in the they form. And notice that hacer is in the infinitive form. Then I've got the verb necesitar, to need. So yo necesito, tú necesitas, I need, you need, he or she needs, we need, the, uh, you guys need, they need. Notice this one is also regular. Okay, so deber, it's regular, necesitar is regular as well. And what could I, you know, what sentence could I, could I make with this? Okay, um, let's imagine... Um, I want to ask some, you know, a group of people, do you need to have a rest? Do you need to rest? Okay. Do you need to rest? I'm asking more than one people, more, more than one person. So I'm going to use this one, necesitáis. So do you need to rest would be necesitáis and then to rest, descansar. And I would put question marks to make it a question. Necesitáis descansar. Do you need to rest? And I've got the necesitáis in the U plural form and descansar in the infinitive, to rest. We've also got poder, to be able to. This one is irregular. As you can see here, puedo, puedes, puede, podemos, podéis, pueden. Okay, so it develops this, this U, which is to be able to or can. So I could say, I could say, for example, um, Let's say I can, I can help at a old people's home. So I'm volunteering and I'm going to say I can help at an old people's home. So I'm going to use this one and I would say puedo, puedo ayudar en una residencia de ancianos. Okay? And we've got here, puedo, I can, and then I've got the ayudar, to help, in the infinitive. And then I've got the verb querer, to want, also irregular, so it does quiero, quieres, quiere, so I want, you want, he wants, or she wants, queremos, queréis, quieren, so queremos is we want, queréis, you guys want, quieren, they want. And a sentence with this could be, for example, um, if I ask someone, do you want to, do you want to collaborate? Do you want to take part? Do you want to collaborate? Okay, so if I ask to one single person, I would use this one for, do you want, quieres, quieres, and to collaborate, colaborar, quieres colaborar, do you want to take part? And I've got the quieres in the you form, you singular, and colaborar in the infinitive. Okay, so if you can see, um, some of them are irregular, so you'll have to memorize those, uh, but what comes after is infinitive, so it's easy peasy. Okay, so um, also, of course, if you notice, we can also, as I said before, you can also use this to give advice or to tell people what they have to do. So, for example, if you, we use especially, 
these forms, the you form, tienes que, debes, necesitas, puedes, as, as a suggestion, you could, you can. Um, quieres, no, you can't tell someone to want something. But you can say for uh, to someone, um, like here, like instead of they must do more exercise, I could say, tienes que hacer más ejercicio. You must exercise more. Or, um, or for example, um, you have to, um, if I want to say, for example, you have to lose weight. Debes, debes perder peso. O necesitas, necesitas estar en forma. You must be fit. Okay, necesitas estar en forma. And so on and so forth. So this is what we're going to use for, um, yeah, to give advice or to make suggestions. Okay. Now, these verbs here, we've got them in the present. Okay, so this is what, we, what I'm going to use if I'm, if I'm saying what I, I must do, I have to do, I want to do, etc. But of course, they can be used in many other tenses, well, in all the tenses, basically. So, what would happen if I wanted to, if I was writing about the past? Okay, so if I'm writing about what I had to do, what I wanted to do, what I was able to do. So here, for example, if I have them in the imperfect. Okay, I could also use them in the preterite. I could use them in, in many tenses, but I've chosen here to um, show you the imperfect. Just to, just to show you that it's not only, okay, we, we don't only use them in the present tense. Okay, so... If I want to say, um, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm describing a situation where we were trying to help people and we couldn't. And I want to say, um, I want to say we could not help, um, we could not help those people, okay? We could not help those people. Okay, so I'm going to look for could, we could, okay, we could, podíamos, so that's going to be podíamos, because it's we could not help, I'm going to say no podíamos, and then now I need the help, so to help is ayudar, and then those people would be a esa gente, okay, so notice how the verb poder is in the imperfect, okay, in the we form of the imperfect, but the verb ayudar, to help, is still in the imperfect, it hasn't changed, okay. I could say instead of we couldn't help those people, I could say, for example, um, they wanted, they wanted to launch a campaign. They wanted to launch a campaign. So I need the they wanted, which is going to be this form, querían. They wanted. And then I need the to launch, which is lanzar. A, um, a campaign, una campaña. Okay, and notice that when we are doing the imperfect, in the imperfect, all of these verbs are regular. Okay, there are no irregularities amongst these verbs in the imperfect. So that is good news. Um, and it means that if you feel very insecure about using them in present because there's, there are irregularities, well, maybe you should then try and use them, for example, when you're talking in, in the past tense. Okay, and then it is also saves you doing past tenses with other verbs. It's just a suggestion. Okay. Um, and then the other case where, another case where it's very, another tense where these verbs are very, very much used is in the conditional, okay, in the conditional, because what is the conditional? Okay, so here the verb tener, if I say yo tendría que, okay, this is I would have to, okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to give you the I, but 
it's the same. You would have to, he or she would have to, we would have to, you guys would have to, they would have to. Okay, so it's the conditional. Deber. Uh, debería is I should. So I should, you should, he or she should, we should, you, uh, you guys should, they should. Okay, so re think of how many times you say things like, oh, you should, or I should. Okay, so there you go. This is the conditional of deber, debería. And notice this, this is completely regular. Um, use it for, to say should. Okay, necesitar. So necesitaría is I would need to. Poder. I, so podría, I would be able to or I could okay it's either I could or I would be able to and querer querría notice this one is irregular because it's it's querría no querería querría and tendría is also irregular yeah so querría is I would want to so let me again give you give you a few examples of some sentences okay so um, this, of course, you, you, it comes especially handy when you're writing about things like volunteering or changing the world or what would people need to do, okay? So what should we do? Okay, what if I said we should raise money? We, we should raise money. Okay, so we should. It's going to be here, deber. We should, deberíamos. Deberíamos, verb deber in conditional. And now all I need is to raise, recaudar, and money, dinero. And notice this, again, is in the infinitive. Okay. Another, another thing I could say, for example, they, they could organize a campaign. They could organize a campaign. They could organize a campaign. So, uh, they could is going to be here with poder. So, they is going to be this one. So, they could is podrían. And then all I need to put is organize, to organize a campaign. To organize is organizar. And a campaign, una campaña. Okay? So, please notice how useful this is going to be when it comes to, yeah, this precisely if you have to write about things like the environment, uh, volunteering, things like um, homelessness, any topic where you need to sort of put forward, suggest what people could do, should do, need to do, uh, what you would like to do. Okay? So, all of that is going to be really, really, really... So, the present subjunctive is something that, you know, often some people, just by hearing the word, that sends shivers down their spine. But it shouldn't be, okay? I hope that you see in, in, this, um, in this explanation, I hope that you see that it's probably not as difficult as, as some people, you know, make it out to be. So, present subjunctive, what is it? The, the fact that it's called subjunctive, it's called subjunctive because it's a mode, okay? It's, it's a way of presenting an action. So anything in the subjunctive, it means that it's not real. It hasn't happened yet. It may or may not happen, okay? What do I mean by this? Okay, we've got here, you, you may be familiar with this. These are the endings of the present indicative, okay? The present indicative is what you may know as the normal present. Present indicative. So you should be pretty familiar with these endings. So we've got the verb hablar. So an example of AR verb. Comer. An example of ER verb. Vivir. An example of IR verb. We've got this, um, these examples here. And these are the three different types of endings for the three different types of regular verbs. And by the way, I'm just going to focus on regular verbs. Okay, I'm not going to go into irregulars. You go into that um, if you do A levels at the moment. Let's just focus on, on, on regular. So these are the present indicative endings. Now, I've got here underneath, I've got the endings or the what these three verbs would look like in the present subjunctive. Okay, so these would be what they would look like in the present subjunctive. Now, 
let's focus. Let's let's ignore for a second the I form. Okay, let's ignore for a second the I form. And let's focus on the others. Okay, so if we look here, so I'm going to look at these endings. So these are the endings of the AR verbs in the present indicative. And I've got here the endings of the, I'm just trying to find the color that stands out, the endings of the ER verbs in the normal present, in the present indicative. Okay, now look at the endings of the AR verbs in the present subjunctive and look at the endings of the ER verbs and the IR verbs in the present in the present subjunctive. What's happened here? Very easy. The AR verb ending of the present indicative have become the endings of the IR and ER verbs. And the endings for the ER verbs in the present indicative have become the endings for the AR verbs in the present subjunctive. That um, plus we've got because all the endings are have got this e, hables, hable, hable, hablemos, hables, hablen. The I form has become hable. And here the same has happened with the A, okay? So comas, coma, coma, comamos. The I is coma. And vivas, viva, viva, vivamos. The I form is viva, okay? So in terms of building the actual verbs, the actual, um, sorry, the actual uh, present subjunctive, it, there isn't a lot of mystery to it. If you are good at your normal present, at the present indicative, doing the present subjunctive shouldn't um, be a massive problem. Just a bit of getting used to because it just doesn't sound as normal, but um, it's pretty straightforward as you can see. Okay, Building it, absolutely, um, absolutely no problem. Let me give you an example. Okay, So for example, um, let's say that I want to say... Um, I hope, I hope you, I don't know, for example, I hope you eat your dinner, okay? I hope you eat your dinner. That's what I want to say. And in Spanish, that would have a present subjunctive, okay? I hope that you eat your dinner. Okay, I hope that you will eat your dinner. Okay, so the expression I hope that, as you will know, is espero que. And this is normal indicative because I hope that, okay, that this is a normal present indicative, okay? This is not the subjunctive. The subjunctive comes now. So let's imagine I'm talking to a, a, a single person. So now I need that you eat, okay, you eat. How am I going to do that? So exactly in the same way as I did the present indicative, but just thinking about the endings. So I'm going to start by thinking to eat. To eat is comer. I'm going to get rid of the ER ending. So I've, I have com. Okay, and now because it's you eat, and as I said, I'm talking to a person, I need to go here. Uh, sorry, it's comer, ER. Uh, so I need to go here and I need this ending. Okay, so it's comas, your dinner, tu cena. Okay, so exactly in the same way as you would have done the present indicative, you do the present subjunctive, just with different endings. Okay, so just, that, that's all it is. So let's have a look at cases, okay, at some of the cases where you're going to be using or you should be using present subjunctive. And by the way, present subjunctive, is really good to use if you are aiming for higher papers, if you're doing foundation, if you understand it and you're good at it and you can maybe learn a few a few expressions and use it, that's great. But if you struggle with it, don't worry about it, okay? It's not, you're not going to be marked down because you're not using present subjunctive, okay? So there are some cases where we're going to use present subjunctive and these are some of them. Okay, I've put here some expressions. So one is when you use expressions of wishing, advising, and requesting. Okay, what are these? These are, for example, the example I've shown you with espero que, your, um, uh, sorry, that's not right. Um, 
yeah well it it, it, it is yeah let, let, let's let's say yeah that, that's fine wishing um it's also quiero que i want that okay so for example if i said i want um i want them to recycle okay let's let's continue with the topic of environment i want them to recycle okay in spanish i'm also going to be saying i want that they recycle Okay, this is what I'm saying in Spanish. So, what do I need to do here? Okay, so first I want the, I, I have the I want that, which is this here. So, quiero que. And now I need to find the they recycle, but it's the that they recycle, okay? It's the subjunctive. So, I need to think, okay, so recycle to recycle, to recycle, to, oh, to recycle is reciclar. So it's an AR ending. I need the they form. So the they form of an AR verb is going to have the EN ending. So that they recycle will be que recicle. This is the stem. And now I need the EN. Que reciclen. Okay. Quiero que reciclen. Yeah. And there are other expressions like te aconsejo que, I advise you to, or ojalá que. So for example here, if, if instead of I want them to recycle, I said I advise you to recycle, that would be te aconsejo que, and because I'm talking to a person, in that case would be re and I'm talking to one single person, so I need the ES ending. Te aconsejo que recicles. Okay? Te aconsejo que recicles los plásticos, for example. Okay? So three uh, good expressions to be followed by subjunctive. Another type of expressions, another group of expressions is expressions of hope, joy, sorrow, anger, and, and emotions. Okay? So here we've got siento que, I'm sorry that, temo que, I fear that, Estoy contento de que, o contenta de que, I am happy that, o espero que. Okay? Um, so, for example, um, what could I say? I could say... Um, mm, right. I could say, I am, I am sorry that you are ill okay i am sorry that you are ill so i am sorry that siento que okay you are ill okay to be ill is estar okay so to be is estar i'm not sure you can see this color estar is to be now, it's an AR verb, and although estar tends to be irregular, it's not irregular in this case. So, because it's an AR verb, that you are, it's an ES, oh, actually, it is a little bit irregular. Uh, <laughs> should have thought about that. Estes, it's got an accent, okay? Estes, so siento que estes enfermo or enferma, depending on who I'm talking to. I just realized actually yes, this is a, is a bit irregular. It's just got accents, really. It's, that's the, the main irregularity. But anyway, so I'm sorry you're ill. Siento que estés enfermo. So that would make it subjunctive. Okay. Another group of expressions that are um, that need subjunctive afterwards are these expressions of doubts, uncertainty, possibility, probability, necessity. Okay. Es posible que, es probable que, es necesario que, quizá, tal vez, dudo que, all of these expressions need subjunctive afterwards. So, um, I could say um, something related to environment. Es, es probable que... Right, let me think. Um, it is likely that we will consume less in the future. Let's say we be more optimistic. It is likely that we will consume less. Okay, so to consume is consumir. 
IR verb. So it is likely that we will consume less. Okay, I just need to go to the we form. Amos ending. So all I need to do is es probable que consume and then I add the we ending. Consumamos menos. Okay, and here I have my subjunctive. Okay, and the same with all these expressions. Okay, so I could say, for example, um, maybe, maybe um, she will recycle. Quizá recicle. Maybe she will recycle, and that recicle is the subjunctive. Okay. Now, another case where we're going to use subjunctive is this one here, which is an interesting one. So, hasta cuando and hasta que, hasta que is until, with something that, sorry, not was, is, is going to happen in the future. So, if you want to say, um, when, I don't know, when I get home, if, and you're thinking of... Um, get home this evening, for example, so something that is going to happen in the evening. So I'm going to say cuando, and then to arrive is llegar, okay, llegar, so it's an AR verb, so of course the I form is going to have an E instead. Now here, the only thing you need to bear in mind is that that's going to happen with some verbs. So lleg, if I write this, this says ye, yeje, okay? Remember the G before the R, the E does H. So in this case, all I need to do is add a U in between, okay? And this is not an irregularity. That's just because of how things, you know, how things spell and how spelling translates into pronunciation. So cuando llegue a casa, um, I will do my homework. Haré los deberes. And this is a normal future, okay? But the verb that follows the cuando is in present subjunctive, okay? And finally, to give negative orders. So we've got the imperative to give orders, to give direct orders. Uh, ben, come. Uh, be, go. Calla, be quiet, okay? But if I wanted to say negative orders, I will use subjunctive. And what do I mean by this? If I want to say, don't speak, don't speak. I need subjunctive. So what do I need to do by this? I need to say, okay, you speak is hables. Okay, you speak is hables. And then I put the no in front. No hables. Okay. Um, another one, I don't know. Um, saltar, to jump. I want to say don't jump. So if saltar is an AR verb, so again, the, subjunct the, the present subjunctive will be saltes, and I just need the, need the not in front, no saltes, don't jump, okay? So these are the main examples, the main cases where you're going to be using subjunctive, and as I said, if you feel confident with using it, or you want to use a couple of expressions here or there, great, if you don't see it clear, don't do it, it's fine, you'll be fine. Okay, the imperfect subjunctive, what is it? Right, it is something to start with that sounds very scary. Just the fact that it's got the word subjunctive in it just probably makes people lose the will to live. But let me tell you, using it sort of, you know, like through all its magnificence can be quite tricky. But just being able to use it in some phrases is very straightforward. So bear with me, okay? To start with, we are going to look at if clauses, okay? If clauses. Remember the word C, si, okay? This word C si means in Spanish, if. Some of you may be shouting at the screen saying, no, 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 no. C si means yes. No, 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 no. The word for yes, yes, is C si, with an accent. This one here, without an accent, means if. Now, this word, C si, allows us in Spanish to write some, or to say, some quite interesting sentences, okay? So we're going to look at three types of sentences, three types of sort of, we can call them, yeah, three, three types of if clauses. Type number one. Type number one, we're going to call it the usual, okay? And what do I mean by this? Okay, so... Oh, I'm going to use this type of sentence to say that if usually 
if I do this, this happens, or if I do this, then I do that. Okay, so for example, I'll give you I'll give you an example of what I I mean with this. So if I if I finish if I finish my homework, I play computer games. Okay. If I finish if, if I finish my homework, I play computer games. And I could start with this sentence actually saying usually usually if I finish my homework, I play computer games. Right. If we look at it in English, what have we got here? We've got two verbs. Well, first of all, I've got the F. Then I've got two verbs finish, which is in the present tense, and play, which is in the present tense. Because I'm saying when this happens, that happens. Okay, so if I want to put this sentence in Spanish, I can basically follow the same pattern. So I would start with the usually, normalmente, normalmente, notice this normalmente is not essential, but just to make the sentence a bit more interesting, normalmente, then if, si, okay, I finish, termino, so here, present tense, termino, my homework, mis deberes, I play. How do I say I play in Spanish? Juego. Present tense. Computer games. Uh, juego a videojuegos. Okay? So, very easily, I'm creating here a sentence that's a little bit more interesting than juego a videojuegos. Okay? I'm giving you a bit more information. I'm telling you when it's normally. I'm telling you that it doesn't always happen. It's if I do something else, okay? So I would really, really encourage you to use this type of sentence. Normalmente, si termino mis deberes, juego a videojuegos. Okay? Now, the second type of, uh, of sentence, I'm going to talk, I'm going to uh, call it about, I'm going to call it intention. Okay? intention. So, if something happens, something else will happen. If I do this, something else I'll, you know, something else will happen. So, for example, I could say, um, if I, if I pass my exams, if I pass my exams, I will go to college. If I pass my exams, I will go to college. So, again, if we look at this sentence in English, what have we got? We've got the if here. Then I have if I pass my exams, so I've got pass, present tense. I will go to college. I've got the will go. I will go. So I've got here future tense. Okay? So, in order to put this into Spanish, basically in Spanish, I do it in exactly the same way, so I can transfer it exactly using present for the first pair, for the first verb and future for the second one. And this would be if, si, I pass my exams, to pass, remember, is aprobar, apruebo mis exámenes, so I've got apruebo in the present, in the, yeah, present tense, I will go to college. So to go is ir, I will go, ire. So ire al instituto. Okay, I will ire al instituto, I will go to college. And then ire, this is future tense. So we've got present, present for something that happens often or something that happens normally, present, future, for something that will happen if someone else if something else happens. Okay? And now here is where the imperfect subjunctive comes into play. Okay? So notice these two sentences, really you've got no reason not to use these two. Okay? Now this third one can be a little bit trickier, but with if you learn a few a few sort of set phrases, you can actually use it very easily. So um so number three would be, how could we call it? Um, we could call it the um, hypothesis. Let's call it hypothesis. Okay, hypothesis. I hope you, you, you know what the hypothesis is. And what do I mean by this? It's 
if something happened, something else would happen. Okay? So, if I passed, if I passed my exams, I would work, oh, I would, let's say, I, yeah, I would work as a lawyer. Okay, if I passed my exams, I would work as a lawyer. And what have you got here? Again, if we look at the English, I've got the if here. Then I have passed, which is a past tense. And then actually I'll, I'll do it in a different color because I've been using different colors so far. So past is past tense. And I would work, as you should know by now, I would work is the conditional. Okay, so I've got past and conditional. In Spanish, we do this very similarly, but instead of using the, like the preterite or the imperfect in Spanish, we use the imperfect subjunctive. So this here is going to be imperfect subjunctive. And this sentence would be, si aprobara mis exámenes. Okay, so this aprobara is an imperfect subjunctive, and then I would work as a lawyer. All we need is the conditional of the word of the verb to work, trabajar. So trabajaría um, de abogado o de abogada. Okay, so we've got here the conditional. Okay, conditional trabajaría and imperfect subjunctive after the C. Okay, so I hope you can see why <clears throat> knowing a few phrases with the imperfect subjunctive could be useful because it opens very often, it opens the door to using a lot of conditional. Okay, because it sets the scene for when would I, <clears throat> sorry, when would I do this if this happened? Okay. So I would really encourage you to use it. Now, I'm going to give you a few phrases which are going to be the ones that you would need the most often. And then I will explain you how the, the, the imperfect subjunctive is built for those of you who want to know where it comes from and who may want to use other verbs or other forms of the verb, okay? But for many of you, knowing a few of the set phrases for now um, will be enough. So what things could you need? Okay. We've got the si aprobara, if I pass, which would be useful for the, for the topic of, of uh, for especially study. But also I've got things like, for, for example, si pudiera, oh, sorry, si pudiera, if I could, si pudiera, um, si, si tuviera, just ignore this here, uh, si tuviera, if I had. For example, si tuviera mucho dinero, if I had a lot of money, okay? Uh, with si pudiera, I could say si pudiera mm, vivir en el extranjero, if I could live abroad, okay? So, for example, si pudiera vivir en el extranjero, um, I don't know, viviría in Marruecos. If I could live abroad, I would live in Morocco, for example. Si tuviera mucho dinero, uh, compraría una moto nueva. I would buy a new motorbike. Okay, so notice I've got the si pudiera, if I could, si tuviera, if I had. I could use, for example, si fuera, if I was. So, for example, si fuera, si fuera más, um, I don't know, si fuera más extrovertida, okay? Si fuera más extrovertida, um, estudiaría teatro. If I was more extrovert, more, more of an extrovert, I would study drama, okay? Or si fuera, I don't know, si fuera 
más mayor, if I was older, si fuera más mayor, um, I don't know, tendría tres hijos, I would have three children, ok, but si fuera, this word is if I was, or if I were, ok, in fact in English you would actually, strictly speaking, you are also using the, the, the um, uh, subjunctive, because here you, could, you would say if I were, ok, which you would be subjunctive, um, si estuviera, si estuviera, this is the imperfect subjunctive of the other verb to be, of the verb estar, so for example, si estuviera, um, si estuviera menos cansada, um, iría a la discoteca, if I was less tired, If I were less tired, I would go to the, I would go clubbing. Okay, so this estuviera, if I was. And for example, another one, si viviera, if I left, si viviera, I don't know, si viviera con mi novio, si viviera con mi novio, I don't know, um, cocinaría cada día. If I lived with my boyfriend, I would cook every day. Okay? Something like that. So, notice these, okay, these are probably si pudiera, si tuviera, si fuera, si estuviera, si viviera, are five imperfect subjunctives that are worth learning. Okay? Now, for those of you who are interested to know where this imperfect subjunctive comes from, how we build it, okay, I'm going to quickly explain it, okay? <clears throat> so, the first thing we do is that we take the third person, the third person plural of the preterite, okay? Of the verb that we want to conjugate. So, let's have a look. Let's imagine we've got this, okay? So, I've got vivir. The third person, which is to live, the third person plural is vivieron, yeah? Vivieron is the third person plural of the preterite. And what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to get rid of the eron, okay? So I, I'm left with the bb, okay? And in its place, I'm going to add era for the yo, Eras for the two, for the two, sorry. Era for the he or she. Eramos for the we. Erais for the uh, you guys. And eran for the they, okay? So, if I left would be si viviera. If you left, si viviera. Das. If he or she left would be si viviera. So notice the first and the third person singular are always the are the same. Okay, so these that I've seen I've said here you could also use for the third person singular. If we left si vivieramos. If you left si vivierais. And if they left si vivieran. Okay, so this is what you need to do to make the present the, the imperfect subjunctive. Okay, just one last thing in case you do encounter this is that the present subjunctive has got two sets of endings for some reason, which we use with any verb. Okay, so any verb would have theoretically two present subjunctives, two sorry, two imperfect subjunctives, one with this ending and another one with the endings s uh, s S, esemos, eseis, esen. Okay? So, if I left could be si viviera, it could also be si viviese. If you left could be si vivieras or si vivieses. Okay? Um, and so on and so forth. But I would really strongly advise you to just stick to one. It's not it's not a mistake to mix them up, but just stick to one so that you don't have to just be, be aware that this is also imperfect subjunctive in case you encounter it in some written text or in some speaking test. 
text but um, in terms of using it I would just probably stick to this one or this one up to you but just stick to one in terms of using it and then um, you don't have two sets of ending to to jumble okay um, and yeah and that's basically it that's basically what the imperfect subjunctive is <laughs>